Afternoon everyone, how are we doing? Uh, first of all, I just want to start off with a wee apology. I've been mega busy this week, mega busy. I've attempted to record this video about two or three times and every time I do, I'll get a phone call halfway through it and you know, I'll be like my boss or something. I can't have their phone number on a YouTube video because all I'm doing is screen recording and talking to you is, is, uh, is I run through some things as you'll know from watching the videos. So it's been real difficult to try to find a wee 20 minutes to sit down and think about a topic that is worthwhile discussing and then having the time to actually put it together without interruption and then getting out at a time where I think you'll benefit from it and um, you know hopefully enjoy it you know at the end of the day guys I'm I'm not kidding on to be the best uh, you know tipster in the world I'll tell you pick this guy and in two days you'll double your money and, and that nonsense but um, it's just to help you devise your strategy help you keep yourself in check how to remain patient what sort of what sort of criteria you want to be identifying in a player before you go on and purchase and when's a good time to sell, when's a bad time to sell, okay? So we've got a good bit to discuss from the week, okay? Now, if you've been on the channel for a while, you've been watching the videos and keeping up to date, you'll know the kind of people we've been holding in the last week or so and you'll probably have, you know, I would hope anyway, if you've been watching videos regularly with me and enjoying the content, I've had a lot of great interactions and I'll continue to encourage that, guys, as much as possible. Um, then you'll know who we're holding and you'll see we've had some movement this week, okay? So yesterday, you've seen trending there, we had Jao Felix, okay? But yesterday trending, we had um, Mauro Icardi, okay? So we've been hanging on to Icardi and if you didn't see the news, he didn't fly to Vienna, he didn't play the Europa League game yesterday. He's been stripped to the captaincy amongst a, a contract dispute and he really shot up in price and I'm struggling to find him now in this last, I've maybe scrolled past him as I'm talking to you, but he went up from 470, 480 odd, bounced right up to 412, I'm just going to do this by highest price, bounced right up to 412 and I sold, I sold him up at 412, I'm not messing about, when you're holding a position guys with a specific, a specific strategy in mind, in mind with, um, a card day, as you'll remember, was really centred and focused around that um, Europa League, you know, playing Vienna twice and the league games they had surrounding that. I seen it as a great opportunity for him to really bounce up and, you know, make some good profit with the goals he was going to score, as well as the, the capital appreciation we were looking to get. So as soon as it happened, I said to myself, right, if I wound back 24 hours and someone told me Icardi is not going to play against Vienna, he's not going to follow the timeline, the strategy that you've laid out for him, but the event that's going to cause that will increase his price to this level and you can take a bit of profit and move on. I would have shook your hand and said, thank you very much, I'll do that, thank you, and move on. Okay, now, he is going to become, he's dipped a bit in price again, you know, so he's been down to 404. He'll probably continue to dip, especially if he doesn't play at the weekend for Inter Milan, he'll probably dip again. But he is going to be holding a bit of value long term because... We were chatting about breaking the £10 barrier with people like Dybala and we were chatting about other folk who once they've been in a kind of transfer saga for a while, their time will come, they will move on. And that seems to be the case now with Icardi. Very similar to Rabio at PSG where uh, the contract dispute is then spilled out and if it then affects his appearances, the amount of appearances he's going to make this season, then he will definitely um, be moving on in the summer, you would imagine at this point. Okay, So he's not a not a dead weight if you picked him up at the price i was really disappointed to see him drop to well, i picked him up at 390 odds but if you picked him up at that 380 379 then you're in a really good position you can hold him for as long as you want really and um, with all that considered transfer speculation and everything as well okay the other little bit of movement we had is we had we're holding like we gradually decreased from 30 down to 20 luke shaws and eventually we've just binned them and moved them on um, he's just not doing anything that we thought he was going to do and the amount of money we were holding in him and the price he was at wasn't too much of a loss wasn't really anything that really hurt the pocket or the balance sheet Okay, the other thing that happened in the Europa League setup is Inkitia didn't didn't feature at all which was quite disappointing um, with no Ozil and no Ramsey travelling I thought right okay he's maybe not going to start but he'll come off the bench and Arsenal should have a good victory da 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 Arsenal lost okay so they lost, which means in the home tie, they almost certainly have to go full strength. And it makes it less likely that Nketiah is going to feature, which is all part of my strategy. It doesn't make him less valuable, doesn't make him a bad person to hold or anything like this. But it just means for why I bought him, 
I'm I'm not going to make any. I'm not going to make the money out of them. I'm not I'm not projecting making the same profits on them anymore. So I want to move them on. We managed to sell seventeen of them last night, quite sharp, and I'm holding on to that money until we get it all together. What we've done with the money that we've released from selling Shaw and uh, Icardi is we've topped up our Rafael Leal. Uh, so we've basically bought some profit, okay? And this is something that we've spoke about before. He's in a really good position. And uh, I'm on the wrong screen to kind of show. I'll go into the app because the app's a bit better for this. So I didn't buy him at 477. I was picking him up just a little bit less than that. Uh, 466, 467 something like that yeah we picked up on our bunch so we went from 15 to 23 so we've increased our overall cost price by a decent margin but then he's jumped up in our little bit as well which is nice so it just means we're buying profit at this stage with him okay which is really good to see and then we've also doubled up on falco okay so we've took our cost price from 104 in real terms it's 96 and a half pence but the way football index works is i'll always round up on fractions of pennies okay so um, we've bought, we've basically bought ourselves out of some liability on that. So when he shoots up again to 104, 110, we're in much bigger profit margins, and we're looking really good. We also topped up our Rafael, um, pardon me. We also topped up our Luis Muriel from four to nine, and we bought some Alfonso Davies ahead of the game tonight. I'm hoping he's going to feature for Bayern, and if he can shoot up to above that four pound mark, which he can comfortably sit at, um, then we'll just make a quick buck on him and just have a bit of fun. Just two seconds. Sorry to kick that stuff out of the way. Uh, I just think he's really low priced in now, but I picked him up at three seventy nine, and I had a spare fifteen pound, and I just thought I'll just put it on him, and um, we'll move on like that. So the rest of the portfolio, guys, you kind of know what it's sitting and everything, okay. But what I really want to highlight to you here is Ericsson, okay. So at Ericsson, it shows that we've lost, we're losing fifteen pound on him by selling him, okay. <laughs> We've gained three pound. I did a bit of research on this. We've gained three pound on them already with assists. Okay, so that's affecting that fifteen down to twelve. Okay. On top of that, you'll remember we quick sold ten of them to get on Leal. So ten of my original Ericsson is doing some profit for us over here with Leal, and then the money we made on Zapata, we put back in. We brought down our overall cost price. We bought ten of them at three seventy-five. Uh, pardon me, four seventy-five or something like that. We bought them really cheap. We bought our cost price down, and then the money we pumped into them, we bought ten of them with our Zapata money at four. So we spent forty-seven fifty. Originally, we only had thirty-five pound of that with Zapata. So again, the cost price I'm looking at here and the the losses and everything, we've put eight pound of profit into that. We've got three pound of dividends. You know, so I'm not looking at that as a clean £15 loss. I'm itching to sell him now because of how long he's taken to get anywhere. He's not broke that £5 barrier like I thought. And Spurs' next game is against Burnley on the 23rd or something like that. So he's not going to see any movement in the coming weeks. And I'm eager to, to just move him on. I was close to quick selling him, but the, the spread was just too sore. Okay, it was just far too sore. What I'm actually going to do as I speak to you now is I'm just going to hit a wee pause on this. Do is we're looking to identify either another opportunity, and I'll do another video later tonight or maybe tomorrow. We're looking to identify another opportunity we can run that fifty pound on, or we might stack it into something else that we're holding. Okay, so. When you're depositing money, guys, you want to be looking at one of two things. Number one, can we do a Raphael Leal situation? Can we buy ourselves into a good position that we know is going to continually increase and buy ourselves more profit? Can we look at a Falco type position where we know he's vastly underpriced and if we are able to reduce our cost price and get more of them cheaper, it's going to increase our profits further down the road? Or do we want to do, we want to do something like the bottom four players you see here? Do we want to pick somebody up just because we see an opportunity that we can try and exploit? And move on like that okay so that's where we're sitting now guys and um, i was going to call this video probably something like a weekly update or you know something like this but i just wanted to touch base with you because it's been a couple of days since i've done a video and um, you can see the now that felix is uh, is trending okay so that's one of the other things i want to address in this video real quick is um is Zhao Felix, okay? We did a video, the last video we did was Should You Buy Felix, okay? And uh, the advice I gave in short, he's not even here, I said he was trending as well, he's like six pound. There he is, okay, obviously he actually went down in the last like hour or something then. 
Um, yeah, he's dropped a wee bit. So what we said about Felix, okay, is we want to find a plateau before we, we move on him, okay? When the graph is just continually moving up, like you can see here, here, and here, if you can see the wee orange lines where I'm touching with my, my finger, it's just an exponential line. When it's going on that line, is in my opinion, a bad time to be buying because you don't know if it's just going to be a quick up and down like you see here. You know, he's went from uh, yesterday, Valentine's Day, he's went from averaging about 584 to today, averaging about, you know, 608, something like this, okay? So you want to be controlling when you're buying them. And like I said at the time, I would always rather buy at some kind of level or some little kind of plateau where he's hovering for, if you look here, from between really like the 9th through to like the 12th, the 13th, he's hovering around that level, 570, 560. And that is a great time to be picking him up before he takes another little spike. He's on a little downward curve now. You might see him levelling out. Uh, Benfica got a great first leg victory against Galatasaray, so they look to be progressing in the Europa League. That's not quite done and dusted yet, but it's looking really good. And obviously, you know, all the other stuff about Felix and how he's kind of panning out, but he did take a little shoot up, he was trending again, so I just wanted to highlight that again, guys, the advice is with these people who are movers and shakers, they take big spikes and increases, is you want to find a level, or you want to find a little plateau, Nicolas Pepe is probably a good example of this as well, where, look at all the blue lines, just all the little movements, and um, when you're finding him at £7.10, you know he's going to have a little drop back down, to that 690 650 you know, um, these people are very, very volatile, and you know you need to be holding your patience, guys, and you need to be holding and waiting for them to pop up at the right time for you to be buying them. Okay, cool. So, guys, um, I'm going to be doing a giveaway uh, when we get to 100 subscribers before me doing this video with an 88. Okay, so I'm really encouraging you guys to uh, hit the subscription bell on this. Uh, like, if you find me on Twitter, retweet, share, comment, please guys as well, I love all the interactions and everything as well that we get on the channel, and uh, when we get to 100 subscribers, I'll be doing a giveaway, and uh, it's not going to be anything massive, but it'll be something nice and something football related, I already know what it is, but I don't want to give it away, we'll wait until we get to that 100 subscriber mark, and I say I'll drop another video guys, later tonight, maybe tomorrow, maybe Sunday, um, just when we've made our purchase and we move these people on, I'll show you what the portfolio looks like, okay, but I just wanted to give you a wee weekly update, see where we're at, and um, please guys, if you've had any success over the Champions League and the Europa League, you had a player that came out of left field and did something amazing for you, then let us know, all the good news stories guys, let's share them, best practice is best served, um, on a platter, rather than a single serving dish, you know, so let's, uh, let's get all that shared about. Also as well, guys, another little kind of footnote. As we mentioned, Dybala about breaking the five pound mark. I said he was likely to get uh, linked to teams and all this kind of stuff as well. It's not actually came on this yet, okay? But I got a message from my pal this morning that he's getting mooted with um, some links. Uh, I forget who it was. It might have been Arsenal or something like this. So that that is starting to, to develop and evolve, you know, so you might notice a little bit more of that in the coming days and weeks, okay? Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Please subscribe, like, share, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. And I'll chat to you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.